This is Healthy Souls with Father Nicholas Lowe, helping you to live a Christ-filled life in today's world. Father Nicholas is the pastor of St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church in Jacksonville, Florida. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father Nicholas, Father Jacob, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I actually have to share this with you. Um, so as I was traveling home from a very long weekend last weekend with my daughter, I was thinking to myself how I felt so disconnected from Lent this year. We have missed church, unfortunately, a few times because of her dance competition. And lo and behold, I get home, I'm unpacking, and I get this call from Father Nick to ask me to give the sermon today. And I thought, wow, God always presents us with opportunities to stay connected to him. And so this sermon is really, for me, I hope you get something out of it as well, of course. But I was working on it very late last night finishing it up and my son came in to the bathroom this morning as I was getting ready and he said mommy did you finally finish that sermon and I said you know what John sometimes you just have to pray that Jesus will give you the words when you stand before his people and give you the words that need to rest on their heart and he said or you could just ask father Nick to write it for you and you could get up there and deliver it (laughs) wise little boy so today we continue our sermon series at the cross as we learn about the seven statements that Jesus made during his crucifixion. And I think I need to set the scene, which this is pretty awesome. Jesus has hung on the cross now for six hours. This was the worst day in human history. Six inch nails in his hands, in his feet, a crown that was shoved on his head that had four inch thorns all around it. He had been pierced in his side. He was beaten beyond recognition. It has become so hard for him to even take a breath. In fact, I read that in order for him to breathe, he had to lift himself up just a bit to inhale. And it was too difficult for him to even do that in those last moments. He's becoming exhausted. And he says these words, I thirst. Up until this point, as he hung on the cross, his words were truly a synopsis of the Holy Gospel. And I think to really understand how profound those two words, I thirst, really are, we have to look back quickly at what he said. He preached words of forgiveness when he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. That horrific scene I just explained to you, Jesus is asking his Father in heaven to forgive those who are responsible. Now let that sit on your heart for just a second because I know so many of us struggle with even forgiving a neighbor who has offended us. Then Jesus preaches salvation. We know this story, one of the criminal who was on the other side nailed to a cross as well. He was overcome by the fear of God that he says to Jesus, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus' response is as clear as it is immediate. He says, I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Once again, even in his last minutes, Jesus is ministering to others. And then last week, Father Nicholas spoke about the words of protection that he says for his own mother. Ever since I became a mom during this Lenten journey, this is the part that just crushes me. Jesus, before taking his last breath, looks down at John and says, help my mother, be there for her, take care of her. During his final agony, he thought of others every single time before thinking of himself. Only after all of this was completed, and we can turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 28, where it says, After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to complete and fulfill the scripture, I thirst. His pastoral heart poured out amongst the people, All things were now complete. His mission on this earth completely fulfilled. The work he had done 
now finally finished. And then he finally speaks of his own need, crying out to his father, I thirst. Jesus' fifth statement on the cross is his only human expression of his physical suffering. Hanging on the cross, having suffered uncomprehensible pain, Jesus' thirst is no doubt a physical need. In fact, some believe his throat was so dry that he needed help to cry out, as the Bible says, with a loud voice, his next words when he cries out to God. But I believe not only was he speaking of his physical need, but he is also referring to his spiritual need. Always the teacher, Jesus uses this statement to help us understand as his only plea for the help that we must always remain thirsty for him. He is the source of our salvation. And I also believe that he had a spiritual need to feel the presence of his father. He is thirsting for God's love during his dreadful hour when he was alone and feeling separated from God. It didn't really hit me until this morning how much I can relate to this profound statement, and I'm pretty sure most of you all can as well. Whether you're a mom, a friend, a caregiver, take that perspective. I know how many times we do, we do, we do, we give, we care for, we protect, we help, we do, we do, and we ask for help. Now let's be clear, I'm not making any similarities to Maria the mom and Jesus our Savior, but hear me out for just a second. Jesus in his dying moments asked for help. He needed physical help, just a little bit of something to drink, but he also needed spiritual help, the presence of his Father. Are you thirsty for a relationship with Jesus Christ? And can you actually admit that you need help? It's funny because most of us can't do that. I admit in front of you today, and anybody who knows me well, knows that I never ask for help. I am the worst at it. That's because, especially as women, we are raised to be confident, independent, capable, we can do it all, and in high heels. And we're even taught to think that if we need help, we're weak, we're incompetent. Let's talk for just a second about some situations that might be draining you. Maybe you have marital problems. Maybe the stresses of work are getting to you. Maybe you have difficulty with your finances and you're struggling to make ends meet. Maybe you're battling addiction. And there are still so many variables that I haven't even mentioned that are draining you. Here we are, empty. But here is what can fill us up. We, just as Jesus did on the cross, we ask God for help. We turn to him because only Jesus can fill us up. Jesus cried out, I thirst, and so can we, because he's ready to help us. And to be Christ-like, we also need to be able to recognize those around us who are thirsty. Put yourself there at the cross, standing next to the Virgin Mary as she watches her son be tortured. Would you not console her and run up to her? Or when Jesus is asking for something to drink, would you not give him something to drink? Of course you would. The Gospel of Matthew even shares with us, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. But the righteous answered, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or naked or sick or in prison? And Jesus answered them, 
just as you did it to the least of me, those who are in my family, you did it unto me. Our world is hurting. Our world is in great need. All you have to do is turn on the TV to see that. There are children who are suffering and causing, de causing devastation in our schools. Families are broken, and this is just one example. We need to become more comfortable in asking for help, and we need to be more assertive in looking around us and offering help. There are opportunities everywhere, and we should be helping. We should be sharing the hope that there is in Jesus Christ and in the word of God that quenches our every need. Open your Bibles now to page 128, John chapter 4, verses 14. You see, I think there's no coincidence here that Jesus, while nailed to a cross, just before taking his last breath, makes one of his only pleas for help, which is, I thirst. It's a reminder of what we learn in the book of John chapter 4. Jesus answered, Whoever drinks this water will get thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring, which provide him with life-giving water and give him eternal life. You see, there's no coincidence that here Jesus nailed to a cross just before taking his last breath makes one of his only pleas for help. It's a reminder of what we learn in the book of John chapter 4. Jesus offered a woman at the well some water. She doubted him, but Jesus responds with that promise. Whoever drinks the water I give them will never be thirsty again. Jesus used water as a symbol of being filled up with the Holy Spirit. And by crying out on the cross that he was thirsty, I wonder if he, the one who came as a source of living water for all of us, was himself actually suffering from spiritual thirst in that moment. My friends, our world is in need of God's healing. Our world is wrecked with pain. And there are people who are parched, dry, and in need of being quenched. God yearns to quench our needs fully and completely. You see, although Jesus is divine, when he was on this earth, he was also human. He suffered hunger, thirst, torture, and he understands more than anyone all of the pain and suffering that we feel. He knows how to fill us up. And during this journey to the cross, every year I think about the immeasurable amount of pain and the love that Jesus Christ has for each of us that he endured such pain. I leave you with this. Scientists say that a human can go for more than three weeks without food although in my house, I beg to differ. And in fact, Gandhi survived 21 days of complete starvation during a fast. But water is a different story. Scientists say the maximum amount of time that we can go without water is about a week. Just like God made this amazing human body to function on food and water, he also made our souls in a way that it has to stay connected to God. If we are separated from him, our soul has a thirst, and nothing else in this world can fulfill it. Ask for help, just like Jesus did. Offer help, just like Jesus did. And quench your thirst daily by staying in the word of God. Every day when you get on your knees, remember those two words that will help fulfill your spiritual needs. I thirst. We invite you to join Father Nick and his wife, Dr. Roxanne Lowe, on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month for their Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls call-in show at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Ancient Faith Talk.